Hi everyone, this is Jim. Um, the game I wanted to take a look at in this video was uh, played in 2005. It's a game between Magnus Carlsen and uh, Simon Agdestein, both uh, Norwegian grandmasters. Now this game was actually sent to me by one of my viewers who suggested that I might do a video on it, and I checked it out. It's pretty interesting, so I um, decided to do this. Um, so this was played in 2005. It was for the Norwegian Championship. So the Norwegian Championship, uh, it happened in two stages. There was an earlier tournament with 16 players, and Simon and Magnus had um, tied for first place in that tournament, and now they had a uh, playoff between just the two of them to determine the Norwegian champion of 2005. Now, by 2005, Magnus was uh, early, already a grandmaster. He had achieved that in 2004 is one of his uh, really fantastic years. He got three Grandmaster norms and had a great result at the uh, Chorus uh, Vikon Zay tournament. Um, and uh, at the age of 13, he became a Grandmaster. So in 2005 here, he's uh, 14 years old now, had his, had his Grandmaster title for uh, around a year. His opponent, Simon Agdestein, is a Norwegian Grandmaster who was actually uh, uh, Magnus's tutor in, in the earlier years. I assume he wasn't his uh, a teacher anymore now that Magnus made Grandmaster already and they're uh, competitors. So um, um, <clears throat> Agdestein is an interesting person in his own right. He's, in addition to being a chess Grandmaster, he was also a professional soccer player. So interesting character. Uh, Magnus kicks off with e4 and uh, Simon replies uh, e5. We get the Rui Lopez. And uh, these are all the standard moves a6, kicking the bishop, and knight f6, attacking the pawn on um, e4. And white just castles, ignoring the attack. Um, and now, uh, instead of bishop e7, the, the main line and the closed Rui Lopez, or um, b5 and bishop c5, kind of the modern way of playing it, we get the move, knight takes e4. And this is the open Rui Lopez. And I've actually covered this in my uh, Chess Basics series. If you're interested in this opening, uh, you can look at the Chess Basics playlist and find one on the uh, open Rui Lopez. So white replies with d4, and it just turns out it's not a good idea for black to grab this pawn because uh, it opens up the e-file and uh, white gets uh, a lot of counterplay. So uh, yeah, it's a dangerous pin on that knight. So the play continues, b5, this is the main line, kicking the bishop, and then d5, supporting the knight, and giving the pawn back. So white takes the pawn. And uh, material balance is restored. Both sides have the same number of pawns. White has this advanced e-pawn, which is maybe cramping black's position. He's also immediately attacking the d-pawn after that exchange, so black defends. Um, and... Um, White is a bit lagging in development, but uh, Black still needs to uh, castle and complete his development as well. So it's a balanced position and kind of an interesting way to play. I mean, it's dynamically balanced, not balanced in the same of in the sense of uh, dead even or whatever. Um, pr still slight edge to White, but uh, interesting play. So Magnus plays Knight BD2 here. Um, I did want to talk about this moment a little bit. There's a number of choices that White has from this point. He can play bishop to e3, he can play queen e2, he can play c3 or knight bd2, the move that was played. So we're going to look at this uh, c3 and knight bd2 are moves that go together, and the question is, what's the best order to play them in? Um, the idea is uh, you're putting the knight over here to free up the c-file so the c-pawn can move forward. You want the c-pawn to go to c3 to uh, put a break on the d-pawn, maybe support a piece coming to d4, and also to open up the square c2 for the bishop, um, putting it on a good diagonal and um, getting pressure against the knight, which is also the idea of knight to d2, putting pressure on that knight. So these moves make a lot of sense, and uh, they can really be played in either order, but um, this is um, the old standard way of playing it, c3, is it sort of declined in popularity after... Um, the Dilworth attack was developed. So that's an interesting way to play where black brings out his bishop and then after knight here, he first castles. And now white puts more pressure on the knight. And then uh, instead of retreating the knight or defending it, he can sacrifice it here. Um, this is the uh, Dilworth attack when he takes on uh, f2. And uh, white takes back. And of course, black is going to get a rook 
and a pawn for the two pieces. But generally that's not a good trade. It's just that right here in this case, um, uh, the circumstances are, uh, tend to favor black a little bit more than the usual case, I should say. So f6, he throws in this move, doesn't just grab the uh, rook immediately, but throws in f6. And um, if white uh, plays something like knight b3, going after the bishop, then he can take and get a second pawn. So now he's got two pawns for the exchange and, um, and a strong center. Well, two pawns plus a rook for two pieces. That's the way I should say it. And uh, that's pretty good, it turns out, for uh, black. He's, he's got control of the center, and he's got easy mobilization for all his pieces. And uh, it's just going to be a while before white's pieces get into the game. So uh, edge to black here. So white doesn't um, play that knight b3 move. That was just an example. What's, what's normally played is e takes f6, which also... Uh, <clears throat> maintains uh, some material, uh, closer to a material balance, I should put it that way. Let's see, is it queen takes f6? Oh, right. Bishop takes f2 check is thrown in first. King takes, and then queen takes f6. And so now we're in that situation. Black has given up two pieces, a, a bishop and a knight, in exchange for a rook and a pawn. So in a sense, black is down material here. But he has um, pressure on the f-file. He has... Uh, his pieces can get into the game very quickly, um, and um, it's a dangerous attack. So white has to tread very carefully here, and uh, w with careful defense, white can defend this and maybe maintain some slight edge, but it's, uh, it's kind of a difficult chore. So white players started avoiding that whole line, and uh, the way they avoid it is uh, in this position where c3 was the main line, they started playing knight bd2, and that's what Magnus played here. Okay, I'm done with that digression in the opening. We'll just stick with the game from here on out. Um, so knight to c5 is played, the main move, just uh, avoiding any exchanges there and uh, looking at the bishop. c3 now, so that the bishop can retreat to c2. And now um, Simon Agdestein plays the interesting move d4, but probably not the best move. What the chess engine recommends here is just taking that bishop, grabbing the bishop pair, and then developing the dark squared bishop, so uh, black can castle. What uh, d4 does, uh, it's a little bit uh, controversial in the sense that it's uh, opening up the center before black has uh, castled with his king to safety. Um, it's not uh, losing any material, but it's just a bit, uh, a bit risky. So after this exchange, um, takes back with the knight. Magnus grabs the pawn, and uh, black takes back. And then um, instead of continuing to trade immediately, which actually that would still be good, um, Magnus goes for this uh, attempt to undermine the uh, queenside pawns with a4, a very typical uh, move in the Rui Lopez after black has pushed his pawns to a6 and b5. Uh, white will often reply a4 to try and undermine that queenside pawn structure. It is a little bit precarious. So right here... Um, the move bishop e7 is probably not the most accurate move. So there's, there's kind of, in this game, a, a series of little inaccuracies from black, and he finds himself in trouble after a bit. So I'm trying to, to spot the turning point, but it's actually pretty hard to find. So that, that d4 move, that was the first one, a slight weakness. This uh, bishop to e7 move is maybe a slight inaccuracy, too. It would be a little better placed on c5, defending the knight. Um, the engine also suggests a move pawn to c5 might be worth looking at. But anyway, bishop to e7 was played. Similar ideas, right? He's going to be able to castle. And uh, maybe he's hoping to keep some ideas of the queen coming, the bishop coming out on the queen side here. Or maybe uh, pushing the pawn to f6 and dissolving the uh, e pawn. Okay, so now Magnus takes the knight. And um, yet another slight inaccuracy um, where black takes back with the queen here rather than the knight. So taking back with the knight is better because um, it keeps the rook defended. When the queen comes out, the rook is hanging here and it's loose because uh, black hasn't castled yet. And because the rook is loose, um, white can grab the b-pawn because this pawn is pinned. And that's what we'll see in the game. When the knight comes out, um, the queen stays here defending the rook. And um, yeah, white would continue with knight e4. 
and then maybe uh, castles here would be a good move. And still, uh, white has a, a pretty significant edge here. Um, his pieces are just uh, better placed. They have more scope, and um, there's weaknesses on the queen side. So, um, so white has the edge regardless. So combination of moves have left black in a slightly weak position. But after queen takes... Cancel that. It was um, knight takes d4 was played. Queen takes d4 was played. And now a takes b5. And for the moment, at least, white is a pawn up. Um, black does eventually manage to reestablish uh, material balance, but it's not. It takes takes quite some effort, and he gets in trouble in the meantime. So um, this pawn is pinned. The a pawn is pinned. And uh, black's idea was to grab the e pawn. So he got rid of this uh, annoying pawn which was uh, cramping his development. Now he's got uh, easy development for his dark squared bishop, but he sacrificed a pawn. And this is not just any pawn, but a really strong past a pawn. So anyway, black castles here. Uh, white develops his knight to f3, kicking the bishop, and the queen goes to b5. So maybe black was expecting he could just uh, round up this isolated pawn. Notice that with the queen on the b file, this other pawn is not able to come forward and support the a pawn. But the a-pawn can go forward by itself, continually supported by the rook. The uh, bishop came out to c5 here, hitting the pawn this way, and the pawn was defended with bishop to e3. So there was an exchange, and uh, black sees a way to get back some material. He trades here and plays the move queen to b6. And uh, this is a fork. He's hitting this pawn, and he's hitting this pawn. And uh, white chooses to save the a-pawn, of course. That's, uh, that's the more dangerous pawn, and gives up the e-pawn here. So we can take stock. Black finally, after some maneuvers, manages to re re restore the material balance, the same number of pawns and pieces for each side. But, uh, but this position strongly favors white. This advanced a-pawn is worth more than any ordinary pawn, or, or even two. <laughs> so... Uh, Pretty, pretty good position for white. But uh, black fights on. Rook f d8, getting his pieces out. Rook f to e1, hitting the queen. The queen drops back to b6. And now knight to e5. So the knight is really well posted on e5. Not only is it able to jump into the queen side here and support this pawn if needed, it's also looking at uh, targets on the king side as well. So a great centralized knight there. c5, pushing forward and maybe hoping to uh, take some squares away from the knight. For example, a rook could come over here and control the uh, c6 square. Uh, rook to f1 was played, going after the uh, f7 pawn. And now, yeah, things are, are quite difficult after this sequence. So um, pawn to f6 could be played. I think uh, maybe this is the best try. Pawn to f6, holding on to the pawn. And uh, knight to c4, kicking the queen. And the queen drops back to b7. But even in this position, um, with this strong pawn here tying down black's pieces, uh, white retains uh, quite an edge. In fact, the computer is suggesting just queen to a6, trying to force an exchange and then playing on with uh, end game with this uh, passed pawn uh, is probably winning for white. So not too appealing. Um, Black tried the move. Agustine tried the move. Rook to d4, kicking the queen, trying to play actively. Queen just dropped back to a2. Um, but notice that it's got some pressure on the knight here, as well as maintaining support for the a-pawn. And now queen to c7 was played. Um, it's really hard to defend the um, this uh, f-pawn. f6, once again, could be played. But knight c4 is, is also in the cards, and that it would be similar to what we saw before. And that would also open up this uh, diagonal towards his king and be pretty scary. Um, what other tries are there for black here? Um, how about trying to block the f-file this way? And just rook takes f4. Ah, yeah, yeah. The knight is pinned. Queen takes f7 as a deadly threat here, so that's not working at all. And also it wins the knight, so that wins a piece. So you can't just uh, block that way. Um, 
The engine is suggesting counterattacking with rook b4 or playing the move uh, h6. And I thought this line with h6 was pretty interesting, so let's just check this out. h6 says you can take the pawn, which uh, at first sight looks really good. I mean, the queen is hitting the knight. Um, you've grabbed a pawn. But there's this uh, saving move, rook d7, hitting the uh, knight. And now... Um, now, actually, uh, White's in a bit of trouble. If he tries to save the knight, then Rook takes a7, uh, wins, because uh, the queen is chased off this file, and this forces an exchange of two rooks for a rook and a queen, and um, Black is just winning, so that's, that's no good. Um, and the queen on um, b6 is defending the knight, so there's no, no grabbing the knight. Uh, what's... What's the suggestion of the engine? The engine says uh, white can maintain equality here by playing queen c4, but that's the best that can happen. That, that would just be an even game. So h6, a very interesting and kind of tricky tricky defense. Um, black played the move queen to c7, and uh, that has a couple of fatal defects. And this is probably the losing move. I mean, gradually, gradually up to this point, uh, black's position has been going downhill, but, uh, but after this, it's clearly losing. So um, what are the problems with queen c7? One of them is that uh, the knight is no longer defended by the queen. The only thing that's defending it is the pawn. And so that uh, line we saw previously where the queen was defending the knight, it no longer works. So h6 is no longer a good defense. Knight takes f7 was played, and then c4. That was his idea, placing the queen here, supporting this pawn to c4, blocking the queen, and also keeping pressure on the uh, on the a pawn, but uh, the queen just goes up to a6, hitting the knight, which, uh, as we mentioned before, was loose. So the knight goes to c5, and now queen to a5, offering to trade queens. Which uh, now that white has an advanced pawn, plus he snagged the f pawn, a uh, queen trade would be an easy uh, end game win for white. So um, black tries to counterattack with rook d7. And then uh, trading queens, let's see, trading queens is not so, uh, not so convincing right here. Let's, let's just check it out briefly. Queen takes c7, rook takes c7. And uh, it looks like black is going to be able to round up that pawn in this case. So that bringing the rook back to defend the queen uh, brings in this uh, rook takes a2 idea, and, uh, and black is looking okay. Looks like he can hold that. So after rook d7, queen to b5 was played, hitting the uh, advanced pawn here and uh, eyeing the rook, and also threatening to come down here to uh, b8 and deliver a nasty check there. So knight b3 was played here, hitting the uh, rook in the corner, so going for the counterattack. Now knight to e5, attacking this rook. So we might get some trade of rooks. Um, and so the rook moved away. And uh, at this point, there's a maiden four. So let's back up. Instead of rook e7, is there anything else that could be tried? The best try here is rook d to d8, just dropping back and defending the back rank. And um, also defending the, uh, the rook on uh, a8. That's an uh, important, important little detail here. But, um, well, after rook to d1, looks like, uh, <clears throat> looks like white is still uh, winning here. Knight takes a1. Rook takes d8. Check. Rook takes d8. Queening. And uh, after grabbing the rook, we have the queen coming into d5. Nice little tactic, picking up the uh, rook in the corner. And so um, when the dust settles, let's see, king to f8, queen takes a8 check, and uh, king to e7. The knight's covering that square, so the king is limited. Now we have, hey, actually, it's one of those situations where uh, it almost looks uh, even. Um, is it safe to take the knight? I guess there's a problem with grabbing the knight. 
queen takes e5. Oh, that's what it is. So this just is dead equal after that. So how does white keep an advantage with queen to e4? Okay. Setting up uh, discovered attacks on the exposed king. So, yeah, we've reached a position where the material is even, but uh, white still has the advantage because of black's exposed king. And uh, this is still a winning edge here, according to the chess engine. But certainly that would be a much more... Uh, testing way to play. So rook d to d8, that's the best defense here. Um, defending the rook at the corner and, and leading to that uh, complicated <laughs> sequence of forcing moves. Okay, um, black instead played rook to e7, just kind of naturally staying on the second rank. He's still hoping to grab the uh, pawn, and so he's keeping his uh, rook on the seventh rank there, and you know, just going to play rook takes a7 on the next move if he has a chance. But he doesn't have the chance because, like I said, there's a mate in four in this position. So if you want to uh, test your tactical ability, see if you can spot the mate in four here. Pause the video if you want some time to think about it. I'm going to give it away now. It's queen d5. If you saw the previous sequence, you'll notice this idea was there as well. It's this fork here on d5 is, is really the deadly threat in the position. And um, so the king has to move. And if king uh, goes back in the corner, for example, this is just an easy mate. Um, just interposes one piece or another and, and they get taken. Um, so what else could he try? If he goes here, is that not a legal move? Queen to d5 check. Oh, it's not a legal move, yeah. The rook is covering the escape. Okay, so the king moves are not legal, which only leaves rook moves. So rook f7 is the other try. And uh, queen takes a8 check once again. Um, and to block it, he can block with the queen or the rook. Uh, it doesn't really matter because either way it's going to be mate. In fact, even rook takes there is mate. Yeah, rook takes f8 is mate. Kind of a cute one because there's no way for the king to escape. Um, and what else? The other, the other option after queen to d5 check is rook here. And once again, queen a8 check. And uh, notice the knight. Well, the knight's guarding that escape, but also the rook is guarding this escape. So, the, yeah, the king just has no way out of the box. All I can do is throw pieces in the way, one and then the other, and then it's uh, checkmate. So after this move, rook e7, queen d8 check, then this is, this is the position when uh, black resigned, and that's how the game ended. So Magnus won this uh, game in the playoff. Um, it was a two-game playoff, two slow time controls, and uh, Simon Agdestein won the second game, or the other game. I don't know what order they were played in. And so there were a series of rapid games that were played, which uh, ended up, their score was even after the rapid game, so they went into a blitz game playoff. And in the blitz games, um, Simon Agdestein actually won. So in 2005, the uh, Norwegian champion was still uh, Simon Agdestein. And then... Um, uh, Magnus won it the next year in 2006. That's when he finally got his chance to be a uh, Norwegian chess champion. So I um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.